So today uh, we'll be discussing about leukemias. Leukemias, they are they are usually known as uh, neoplastic proliferation of the uh, white blood cells, uh, are known as leukemias. That is uh, the proliferation of abnormal WBC cells. Actually, uh, they are not the WBC cells, but rather they are the precursors of WBC cells, uh, which are in immature form. They proliferate and result in formation of leukemias. And usually, these leukemias they have been classified generally historically historically based on the type of the cell based on the type of the cell they could be myeloid leukemias or lymphoid leukemias myeloid leukemias are the leukemias which constitute the myeloid cell lineage whereas lymphoid leukemias they are the leukemias which constitute the lymphoid cell lineage and also they have been classified based on the natural history of the disease that the patients are uh, showing based on the uh, duration also they have been classified as acute leukemias and chronic leukemias. So this has been described as a historical classification. Coming to the classification which has been a standard classification has been given. Uh, but this classification does not only involve leukemias. Since uh, the lymphoid cell lineage is also involved, it also includes uh, the classification of certain lymphomas. So the neoplasms of the hematopoietic as well as the lymphoid tissues they are broadly based uh, categorized into three categories the first one is the myeloid neoplasms they are include the myeloproliferative diseases as well as certain myeloproliferative syndromes and acute myeloid leukemia and acute bite phenotypic leukemias so these are certain leukemias which can which come under myeloid neoplasms Coming to the classification of lymphoid neoplasms, they are the B cell neoplasms, that is uh, B cells, that is the cells which are supposed to be from the bursa, uh, they are known as B cell lymphoid neoplasms or the T cell neoplasms derived from the thymus and the natural cells, uh, cell neoplasms which are type of leukocytes and then the, the Lodkin's lymphoma. So these are the lymphoid neoplasms. Next coming is the histiocytic neoplasms. So the cells uh, that is the lymphocytes which reach the uh, lymphocytes or the macrophages which reach the tissues are known as histiocytes. And these histiocytes any kind of abnormality or mutations results in histiocytic neoplasms. Amongst them it is the Langhans cells histiocytosis. Coming to the leukemias. Uh, acute leukemias, they are the leukemias which are pre the predominant uh, undifferentiated leukocytes or the precursors also known as leukemic plus and these uh, they are the acute leukemias. Amongst them it is the acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphocytic leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia. So acute lymphocytic or lymphoblastic leukemia is most commonly seen occurring in the age group of children as well as in young age, young adults. Whereas acute myeloblastic leukemias, it most commonly occurs in all age groups. Coming to the chronic leukemias, they are the leukemias which are easily recognizable uh, amongst the late precursors. They are the late precursors of the series of the leukocytes. And they are further classified based on the duration into, based on the duration also based on the cell lineage into chronic lymphoblastic or lymphocytic leukemia, most commonly occurring in the elderly age group and chronic myeloblastic leukemia occurring in the middle age group. Coming to the etiological agents for these leukemias as well as lymphomas, uh, they could be hereditary. Most commonly, there have been many uh, incidences uh, or incidence rate has been more uh, higher in amongst identical twins. That is, there is more concordance amongst these identical twins. And also, it is familial. That is, uh, there is a proper familial history amongst these patients. And it could also be because of a genetic disease association that is based on the abnormality in the genetic composition uh, and uh, associated genetic inherited disorders, uh, leukemias and lymphomas are also being seen. And uh, it could also be infectious, that is it could be because of the human T lympho lymphotropic virus has also been uh, seen uh, associated with this leukemia. And most commonly, HTLV-1 is being involved in adult T lymphocytic leukemia. And uh, next is the HTLV-2 has also been implicated uh, for developing leukemias and lymphomas. And the other viruses, they are the Epstein-Barr virus involved and seen in uh, involved, uh, causing uh, Hodgkin's as well as Burkitt's lymphoma. Then the HIV, which is a human immunodeficiency virus seen involved in lymphomas of B cell and Burkitt's. Next is a hepatocellular virus that is a hepatitis C virus being involved in a lymphoplasmocytic lymphoma. 
and next is a helicobacter pylori which is an infectious microorganism seen associated with the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue uh, lymphoma of the stomach so see, these are certain infectious etiological uh, agents next coming is the environmental factors this could be because of the ionizing radiation which damage the uh, differentiating um, cells in the bone marrow and result in a mutated cell which is being carried to the generations and results in leukemias or lymphomas. Other than that, there are chemical carcinogens such as the smoke pollution uh, which, is a, which is being absorbed from the pollution or otherwise uh, it could be because of the tobacco contents or alcoholism could be the act as, acting as a chemical carcinogens. Next coming are certain drugs such as the alkylating agents and patients on steroid therapy are also in term responsible for development of leukemias and lymphomas. Coming to the disease which are associated with the immune system and they are the immunodeficiency disease such as the HIV uh, can also be seen other than that autoimmune disease association in case of systemic lipoid erythematosus as well as uh, certain rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Jogran syndrome these are the conditions which are being seen associated with leukemias and lymphomas. Coming to the pathogenesis, it is usually because of a genetic damage to single clone of the target cells. That is the genetic damage which could uh, involve uh, in the differentiating cells that is in the myeloid lineage or the uh, lymphoid lineage which um, uh, are exposed to these genetic damages um, and result in the formation of the mut mutations which are being carried and they thereby uh, are inherited into the uh, differentiating cells and which are being carried. So this could be one of the reasons for development of leukemias. The other one is trans chromosomal translocation which is seen as chronic leukemias that is Philadelphia chromosome that is as translocation of the chromosome of 9 to 22. So uh, this has been observed in case of chronic leukemias and has been observed as one of the pathogenesis for this uh, leukemias to develop. Other than that the maturation defects that is the maturation from a blast cell or the myeloblast cell or the lymphoblast cell uh, during these uh, there are even certain uh, maturation to the chronic uh, lymphocyte cell or the myelocyte can also result in a maturation defect and result in leukemias. Other than that myelosuppression. Usually we see in bone marrow because of the increase in the precursor cells of the WBC uh, this uh, increased precursor cell might replace the other blood cells or such as the red blood cells and the platelets and result in suppression of the bone marrow activity and result in myelosuppression as a pathogenesis a basic pathogenic mechanism for uh, development of leukemia. Other than that, organ infiltration, such as the bone marrow activity which carries that is uh, the presence of immature cells, that is C cells, uh, um, the precursors of the WBCs, uh, WBCs which do not differentiate, but rather these precursor cells are being carried to the other tissues by organ infiltration, that is by lymphoid drainage or otherwise blood circulation. These are uh, immature cells, they might uh, result in or deposition, depositing in certain other organs and result in organ infiltration and development of lympho, leukemias. Coming to cytokines, they are majorly involved in, uh, uh, since they are, uh, cytokines also act as a protective agents. So these cytokines, uh, they are usually involved uh, rather than leukemias, they are more commonly involved in uh, lymphoma such as Hodgkin's lymphoma or Burkitt's lymphoma. Coming to the acute myeloid uh, leukemia, this is usually a heterogeneous defect which is being characterized by infiltration of the malignant myeloid lineage cells into the blood, bone marrow and other tissues. So it is a myeloid uh, cell lineage derivative leukemia and occurring uh, because of the duration it is known as acute myeloid leukemia. And usually it is because of the inhibition of the maturation of the myeloid stem cell. That is the myeloid stem cell which does not differentiate into further WBC cells. Uh, it is being blocked. So this results in acute myeloid leukemia. And um, the genetic um, basis so in acute myeloid leukemia is translocation. That is this translocation of the chromosome 8 and 21. Uh, from uh, And it most commonly involves in the long arm. The abbreviation for T821, Q22, Q22 is that is translocation of chromosome 8 and 21 where the long arms of this uh, Q, uh, Q denotes the long arm of the chromosome and 2, it is actually not called 22 but rather it is called as 
2 2 and q 2 2 that is 2 is a region and the b is the other 2 is a band so there is translocation of the 8 uh, chromosome with 21 at the regions of the long arm uh, region 2 and band 2 then other translocation is uh, the translocation of uh, chromosome 15 and 17 with a long arm of region 2 and band 2 and uh, that of the 17 chromosome long are uh, region 2 and band 2. So these are the trans translocations which are seen in acute myeloid leukemia. Coming to the inversions, we see there is, there is inversion of the amongst the chromosome that is uh, the usually the short arm at the region 1 and band 3 is being being replaced at uh, long arm region 2 and band 2. So there is inversion that is conversion of this replacement or translocation of these areas. This results in acute myeloid leukemia. So these are said to be certain etiological agents for the acute myeloid leukemia to develop. So the cells uh, usually in acute myeloid leukemia uh, how they develop is the stem cell in the bone marrow which usually differentiates into a myeloid stem cell usually is supposed to differentiate into a myeloid blast but since there is a lack of maturation of the myeloid stem cell into the myeloid blast cell it might result in acute myeloid leukemia uh, and um, this acute myeloid leukemia might result in the formation of immature monocyte and granulocyte. Coming to the classification of acute myeloid leukemia, it is based on two classifications that is the classification given by the FAB system and that of the WHO system. So the FAB system, it usually depends majorly on the cytochemistry that is based on the cytochemical stains which have been utilized and other than that uh, it also helps in the it also has a criteria that uh, if the bone marrow consists of more than only 30% of the blast, then it can be considered as an acute myeloid leukemia. So based on the morphology as well as the cytochemistry, uh, this FAB system divides the acute myeloid leukemias into 8 types. Starting with uh, the first type that is denoted by M0 which is a minimally differentiated acute myeloid leukemia and it constitutes of two percentages of total acute myeloid leukemias and morphologically we observe that they are blasts which lack the definite uh, cytological as well as the cytochemical features but rather they have the myeloid lineages uh, and regions. So usually when it is being stained uh, cytochemically, then it shows a myeloperoxidase negative cytochemical stain. Next coming is a M1 st M1 stage or M1 uh, acute myeloid leukemia. It is the stage where there is lack of maturation. It is seen in 20% of the cases of AML where we see the myeloblasts are usually predominating cells and there are only few uh, granules or M1 stains positive for the myeloperoxidase. Next coming is a M2 that is AML with maturation and uh, constitutes 30% of all the AML uh, uh, leukemias uh, and in this stage we see that the myeloblasts uh, along with promyelocytes uh, they are predominant and there are even all rods which are being present other than that it stains myeloperoxidase it stains um, gradually for it says severely for myeloperoxide giving a uh, grade of 3 for myeloperoxidase stain. Coming to the M3 stain, uh, M3 stage of uh, AML that is it shows uh, acute promyelocytic uh, leukemia and it constitutes 5% of all the AMLs and usually we see that it is hypogranular promyelocytes along with that there are even few multiple R rods which are present per cell. It is usually uh, gives a grading of myeloperoxidase staining of plus two stains. Then coming is a M4 that is a acute myelocyto, myelocytic, myelomonocytic leukemia which is a constitutes 30% of all the AMLs and usually it is characterized by presence of mature cells of both the myeloid as well as the monocytic series in the peripheral blood and these myeloid cells usually resemble that of the M2 AML. And uh, usually the staining uh, uh, of with myeloperoxidase gives a uh, plus 2 grade stain and it also stains for non-specific asterisk which gives a plus 1 stage. Then coming is the M5. Uh, it is usually a, a acute monocytic leukemia which constitutes of 10% of all the cases and it has two subtypes that is M5A which shows a poorly differentiated monoblast as well as it constitutes of M, uh, another stage known as M5B stage which shows its, uh, differentiated promonocytes as well as monocytes and this um, 
M5 it usually stains positive only for non-specific esterase with a plus one uh, grade. Uh, coming to the uh, M5, it is an acute monocytic leukemia uh, which uh, constitutes of 10% of all the AMLs and it also has two subtypes that is uh, two subtypes. Coming to M6 stage, it is an acute erythroleukemia which constitutes of less than 5% of all the AMLs and morphologically it is characterized with presence of erythroblasts which predominate. They are present in more than 50% uh, in the total percentage of the erythroblast series and they are also constituted of myeloblasts and as well as promyelocytes. They are also increased and uh, these uh, M6 cells, they usually stain erythropositive for the pass that is per iodic acid skip stain for the erythroblast as well as the myeloblast. Whereas the myeloblast they stain positive for myeloperoxidase. Coming to the last series that is the M7, they are the acute megalocaryocyte leukemia which constitutes of less than 5% of all the AMLs and they are characterized morphologically with the presence of pleomorphic that is undifferentiated blasts uh, which predominate and they react with antiplatelet antibodies and they stain positive for the platelet peroxidase. So this is the classification by FAB. Coming to the pictures which show that is a AML uh, first picture showing the acute uh, myeloid leukemia showing a M0 phase then coming as a acute myeloid leukemia of the M1 phase the third picture showing the M3 phase and the fourth picture showing the M4 phase. M4 phase. These are certain pictures uh, stained uh, laboratorily for the to identify the uh, to give the proper grading uh, based on the FAB classification. Next coming is a WHO classification. It uh, varies from that of the FAB classification where FAB classification requires at least presence of 30% of the blast. Whereas in WHO classification, they have classified uh, acute myeloid leukemias if there is at least presence of 20% of the blast. And rather they have not given importance much to the cytochemistry, but they have considered cytochemistry as one of the criteria. But other than that, they have also involved the clinical cytogenetic as well as molecular abnormalities coming to the classification or uh, based on the who aml with recurrent cytogenetic abnormalities is the first uh, group where they have observed aml with presence of uh, translocation of chromosome 8 and 21 with uh, uh, q22 and q22 and next is the uh, aml with abnormal abno bone marrow eosinophils uh, has been seen showing a chromosomal inversion Next is a acute promyelocytic leukemia showing a uh, translocation as well. And next is a uh, acute myeloid leukemia showing uh, abnormalities with the 11q23 uh, chromosome. So this is a certain. Uh, these are the certain uh, cytogenetic abnormalities with acute my myeloid leukemia. Coming to the acute myeloid leukemia with multilineage dysplasia, they are sh seen. Uh, with prior or otherwise without prior the uh, MDS stage. Next coming is the uh, AML acute myeloid leukemia with therapy related and as well as MDS. Uh, they, they could be because of the alkylating uh, agents or otherwise topoisomerase or otherwise other types. Coming to the AML which are not otherwise catheterized, they are the AML which is being minimally differentiated or AML without maturation or AML with maturation acute myelomonocytic leukemia, acute monoblastic and monocytic leukemia and then it comes as acute erythroid leukemia or acute megakaryocytic leukemia and acute uh, basophilic leukemia and acute uh, pan myelosis uh, with myelofibrosis and myeloid sarcoma. So these are the uh, AMLs which are not otherwise categorized. Coming clinically to differentiate the acute myeloid leukemias, uh, due to the bone marrow failure, uh, they could be uh, due to the bone marrow failure, they show symptoms such as of anemia, that is paleness, tiredness, and weakness of the patient. And uh, bleeding manifestations can also be seen because of the reduced in the platelet count. And uh, it is also the infections uh, because of infections of the mouth, throat, skin, respiratory, as well as the perianal sites can also give a clinical manifestations of the acute myeloid leukemia and patient might also give a systemic manifestations of fever and because of the due to organ infiltration uh, patient might manifest with uh, pain and tenderness of the bones as well as as lymphadenopathy splenomegaly and hepatomegaly seen in these patients leukemic infiltration of the kidney can also be seen and patients might also give a complaint of gum hypertrophy that is increased swelling of the gum 
Other than that, the other features are chloroma and glanulocytic sarcoma, which are also a neoplastic proliferation seen associated with acute myeloid leukemia. And the, when the central nervous system in, uh, involvement is seen, it involves the meninges. So these are the third and clinical factors, clinical features based on the bone marrow failure and organ infiltration. So there is a picture showing the gum hypertrophy and the next uh, HND stain, the hematoxylin and eosin stain picture showing the chloroma or the sarcoma. Coming to the lab investigations, usually a uh, blood picture is done where we observe anemia as uh, anemia is also one of the clinical picture uh, by uh, lab investigations shows that it is a progressive and normochromic anemia and the reticulocytosis uh, usually there is presence of reticulocyte count that is it can be present up to 5% of the reticulocyte count cells are being observed and it shows few nucleated red cells. Coming to the platelet count, it is usually moderately or severely reduced. Coming to the WBC, it is usually subnormal or that is below the normal level or otherwise markedly elevated level. It is a wide way range of WBC count can be seen. Other than that, there is decrease in the neutrophil count because it's also when associated with certain infections of the skin, mouth and the respiratory system. And there are also presence of blood cells and certain smear cells in the peripheral blood examination. The bone marrow activity it usually shows hypercellularity with the alteration in the myeloid series as well as in the erythroid series. And uh, usually there are leukemic blast cells numerously present and which are usually tightly packed. And other than that, there are reduced erythropoietic cells as well as this erythropoietous and ring sideroblasts can be seen. And the megakaryocytes they are usually reduced or decreased in the uh, completely absent in the quantity. And as already discussed, uh, uh, they are usually stains which are being used for the um, cytochemical stains in the FAB classification and the stains which are being used for the cytochemistry are per iodic acid skiff stain and then uh, non-specific enolase, acid uh, phosphatase, sudan block and myeloperoxidase and they stain specifically for certain uh, uh, groups in the FAB classification which have been already discussed in the classification. And the biochemical investigations have released revealed that there is elevated serum lysosome as well as elevated serum uric acid in content. So there is a picture showing positive stain for the esterase stain in the first picture where they give reddish in color and then comes the all rods that is a there is a completely pale eosinophilic areas can be seen and uh, certain cytoplasmic uh, edges can be seen uh, which are being extended. Then coming to the ring cellulobras, ring cellulobras, uh, it is a stain central paler with uh, showing a central uh, uh, empty area or empty lacunae. And then comes this phagocyte, uh, phagot cell which shows a uh, diffuse granulation of the entire cell. Coming to the treatment of acute myeloid leukemias, usually uh, for anemia and hemorrhage, they are fresh, fresh blood transfusion and platelet concentration is uh, suggested for the patients in conditions such as uh, uh, when associated with infections in case of neutropenia, the replacement of the leukemic uh, blast cells has been suggested and a prophylaxis in case of infections can be given in conditions such as ball sterilization, uh, antiseptics and systemic antibiotics are being prescribed. Coming to the cytotoxic drug therapy, usually cytosine arabdenose and anthracyclines as well as 6-theoguanin are being suggested. Other than that, uh, in conditions when there is severe bone marrow invo involvement, then bone marrow transplantation is suggested in these patients. Coming to the acute lymphoblastic leukemia, usually acute lymphoblast lymphocytic leukemia is also it is also termed as acute lymphocytic leukemia or acute lymphoid leukemia, and uh, it is usually major uh, underlying defect in this acute lymphoblastic leukemia is because of overproduction or accumulation of the lymphoblast cell, which results in uh, damage to that of the other blood cells such as the RBCs, uh, WBCs, and platelets. And it is a lymphoblast, this lymphoblastic leukemia of the acute phase, it is usually seen in children under the age group of 2 to 5 years of age and also in old age people, that is in elderly people. Uh, so this uh, pre-B-cell pre, uh, pre acute lymphoblastic leukemia constitutes of 90% whereas that of uh, pre-T-cell uh, lymphoid malignancies, they compromise remaining 10%. So how this lymphoblastic leukemia occurs is from the stem cell. When the stem cell 
when the stem cell differentiates into the lymphoid stem cell it usually results in lymphoid blast and this lymphoid blast uh, usually rather it does uh, differentiates into B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte but rather since acute lymph uh, lymphoblastic leukemia occurs at this stage before the differentiation into the complete B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte it might occur in the precursor B lymphocyte stage or precursor T lymphocyte stage so this is how the uh, progression from the stem cell to the uh, pre B lymphocyte and pre T lymphocyte occurs. Precursor B cell uh, lymphoblastic leukemia or, or lymphoma. It is an uh, lymphoma. It is a leukemia which uh, occurs in children, whereas it is a lymphoma when it ad, uh, involves the children and adult age group. Whereas precursor T cell uh, lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma, it occurs as uh, acute it occurs in the similar age group but rather it is it occurs in a varied range of age groups and usually precursor b cell lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma it rapidly transforms into a leukemia rather than being stagnant then um, whereas precursor t cell lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma or lymphoma it begins as an in mediastinal mass and pleural effusion which thereby rapidly progresses to leukemia Coming to the extranodal environment in precursor B cell lymphoblastic leukemia, usually other than the lymph nodes, uh, it might also result in uh, hepatomegaly, that is enlargement of the liver and splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen and CNS infiltration, testicular enlargement as well as cutaneous infiltration. And uh, there are infections even because of the cytopenia which can be seen in case of precursor B T cell lymphoblastic leukemia. Whereas in precursor T cell lymphoblastic leukemia, we see uh, the conditions such as anemia, decrease in the hemoglobin concentration as well as decrease in the neutrophil count, neutropenia, decrease in the platelet count, thrombocytopenia are seen. Other than that, uh, patient might also manifest with lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly as well as CNS involvement. Coming to the clinical manifestations of uh, uh, these patients, uh, patients usually pre present with generalized weakness and fatigue. Anemia can be produced along with anemia, the other signs of paler, generalized weakness and uh, fatigability can be seen. The patients might also complain of dizziness and frequent or unexplained fever. Uh, associated with certain infections, weight loss and or uh, associated with uh, loss of appetite can also be seen, bone pain and uh, bone pain as well as joint pains can be seen, there is excessive and unexplained bruising and petechia which could be because of probably of thrombocytopenia and patients might complain of breathlessness uh, uh, on subjective examination, there is presence of enlarged lymph nodes, liver as well as spleen and edema can be observed which is a pitting type of edema most commonly involving the lower limbs as well as the abdomen so these are the clinical features coming to the laboratory investigations uh, when a blood picture is being observed uh, patients might be present with anemia as well as thrombocytopenia and increase in the leukocyte count that is a uh, leukocytosis can be seen other than that the differential leukocyte count uh, uh, reveals the presence of increased number of lymphoblasts and um, altered uh, micro myeloid cytoplasmic ratio that is high which is high and the smear cells can be observed that is uh, smear cells are usually the uh, cells uh, they are the leukocytes which usually degenerate and result in the formation of smear cells coming to the bone marrow examination usually malignant undifferentiated cells of the precursors uh, of b cells and t cell origin can be seen other than that megakaryocytes uh, which can be seen in a reduced quantity or otherwise they are completely absent the coming to the cytochemical stains uh, uh, periodic acid cliff stain is used which stains positive for the immature lymphoid cells whereas the acid phosphatase which is used uh, which shows a focal positivity in the leukemic uh, blast cells then coming as a myelo myeloperoxidase stain which shows negativity for the immature cells Sudan black also stains negative in immature cells whereas non-specific esterase stains negative also in immature cells coming to the cytogenetic analysis usually we see that the leukemic blast cells uh, in a pre b cell uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia this translocation of the chromosome 9 with 22 which results in the formation of philadelphia chromosome which is positive for all the ALL cases so there is a picture showing the translocation of the chromosome 9 to 11 resulting in a chroma philadelphia chromosome formation and then the picture first picture showing the precursor b cell uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia which can uh, be seen uh, with a 
the with an adjacent extra rim of the cytoplasm next coming uh, is a stain third picture shows uh, the stain of papillin stain staining the uh, precursor b cells then coming at the bone marrow smear which shows the presence of hypercellularity which is being seen so coming to the treatment of uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia usually patients are su suggested with certain drugs with a combination of vincristin prednisolone anthracillins as well as l aspirinase otherwise otherwise uh, in, when the bone marrow is severely involved patients are suggested for bone marrow transplantation the prognosis is children in children is more better when compared to that of the adults and in also when the limited disease which is confined only to the lymph nodes has better prognosis than that which has involved or infiltrated into the uh, other body organs. Coming to the contrasting features of acute myeloid leukemia as well as uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, coming to the age, usually we find AML is seen more commonly occurring in 15 to 40 years of age whereas ALL um, under the age of 15 years and coming to the physical findings. Uh, Patients usually come uh, come with an uh, spleno uh, complain with a splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, lymphadenopathy, bone tenderness, as well as gum hypertrophy in AML. Whereas in ALL, we see that uh, the sp uh, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, uh, and as well as lymphadenopathy, they can be given a grade of two. That is where it is more severe when compared to that of the patients in AML. Other than that, bone tenderness and CNS involvement is also observed in ALL patients. The laboratory findings, usually we find that uh, the total leukocyte count in AML is low to high um, whereas in uh, ALL also it is a low to high TLL count whereas in uh, AML we see the predominant cells are the myeloblasts and promyelocytes in blood and bone marrow whereas in uh, ALL it is the lymphoblasts uh, in blood and bone marrow which are predominant. The diagnostic criteria for AML is based on FAB as well as WHO criteria whereas the diagnostic uh, and this FAB uh, uh, it has been classified into N0 to on uh, all the 8 types in WHO criteria it requires at least the presence of more than 20% of blast cells for diagnosing of AML for to give a diagnosis of AML whereas in ALL FAB uh, uh, has been classifying it to uh, 3 types and whereas in uh, WHO classifies it into uh, two types that is the pre B uh, precursor or pre T limb precursor and the WHO is same for both in AML as well as ALL. Coming to the uh, cytochemical stains, usually uh, for AML it is uh, they stain positive for myeloperoxidase, Sudan black, non specific enolase, as well as uh, acid phosphatase, whereas in uh, in ALL, it is uh, stains positive for past stain as well as acid phosphatase. Coming to the specific therapy, usually cytosin and uh, arabinos as well as anthracyclines, they have been suggested in AML patients, whereas in ALL patients, it is vincristin, prednisolone, and as asparaginase. Coming to the immunophenotyping, patient stain for uh, positive uh, for CD1, 13, 33, 41, as well as 42, whereas in ALL, they stain. Uh, positive for uh, ALL TDT uh, whereas uh, pre, pre B cell precursors they stain positive for CD19 and 20 whereas pre uh, precursor D cell, T cells they stain positive for CD1, 2, 3, 5 and 7. So these are the immunophenotyping. Coming to the cytogenetics, uh, in M3 AML type uh, we see there is translocation of chromosome 15 and 17 whereas in M4 type we see uh, inversion of chromosome 16. Whereas in ALL, we see that uh, there is a uh, translocation of 9 to 21, that is Philadelphia chromosome, especially in precursor B cells. Coming to the response of the therapy, when uh, contrasting features of AML to ALL is, this remission rate is very low in ALL, whereas the remission rate is very high in ALL. ALL. Coming to the median survival rate of these patients of AML, they survive up from 12 to 18 months after the therapy whereas uh, in ALL children without the CNS prophylaxis they can survive up to 33 months whereas with CNS prophylaxis they survive up to 60 months and in adults it is same as that of AML 12 to 18 months. Coming to chronic myeloid leukemia, usually this is a leukemia because of the formation of Philadelphia chromosome which results in a malignant clone. So how this malignant clone usually forms? Well, the, in a, the underlying basic mechanism is there is reciprocal translocation of chromosome 9 and 22. This reciprocal translocation results in formation of Philadelphia chromosome. This Philadelphia chromosome is formed by fusion of the breakpoint cholesterol on 
break point cluster region which is present on chromosome 22 short arm long arm of chromosome 22 at the region 1 and band 1 this trans fuses with that of the uh, aberrant mu burine uh, crystal that is uh, abl which is a which has been observed in a virus and this is usually present on cro long arm of chromosome 9 region 3 and 4 this fusion of these two chromosomal regions which results in the formation of philadelphia chromosome which is formed by the translocation of the chromosome of um, the long arm of chromosome 9 with that of the act of the chromosome 22 where this translocation of the region 3 band 4 with that of the region 1 uh, band 4 and chromosome 22 it results in a uh, fusion of the bcar and uh, abl this forms this in turn forms the transformation of the uh, progenitor cells in the hematopoietic system and results of the malignant clone of cell this, this is a picture showing the Philadelphia chromosome that is ABL chromosome uh, from 9 uh, to BCR region in chromosome 22 where there is translocation of the long arm of chromosome 9 resulting in Philadelphia chromosome. So usually this uh, uh, chronic myeloid leukemia usually occurs when this uh, at the stage where there is a uh, differentiation of stem cell to the myeloid stem cell this uh, chronic myeloid, uh, myeloid leukemia occurs at this stage where there is blockage of the uh, further differentiation of stem cell to myeloid stem cell coming to what happens of by the fusion of this bcr and abl uh, that is chromosome uh, 9 and chromosome 22 it results in activation of the abl region uh, this abl region activate uh, activation in turn inhibits the apoptosis so the progenitor uh, damaged hem hematopoietic cell uh, are rather being carried to the apoptosis they continue to proliferate and resulting in formation of mutated cell this is because of the inhibition of apoptosis other than that we also see that the abl there is a, a dna a, abl as a dna binding protein is also being altered and the other functional changes is uh, binding of the abl to the actin microfilament is increased which might also result in a malignant clone of cells coming to the transformation from chronic myeloid leukemia to the chronic blastic stage that is it majorly occurs because of the structural alterations in tumor suppressor gene p53 gene and the structural alterations in tumor suppressor retinoblastoma gene or otherwise in tumor alterations in the rat sarcoma oncogene or alterations in the uh, myc gene um, then it will also be because of the release of the cytokines uh, interleukin 1 uh, alpha b um, then uh, it is also because of the functional inactivation of tumor suppressor protein that is a phosphatase A2. All of these uh, in turn causes the transformation of myeloid series to the blastic series which are usually required for the uh, usually uh, halt, uh, they halt or um, stop the division but rather because of the alteration in the breakpoint cluster gene and the ABL gene this uh, progresses to CML2 blastic phase. The clinical features in these patients, the patients are present with anemic features of paler and weakness. Other than that, there is also hypermetabolism symptoms. Then uh, splenomegaly can also be seen alone or associated with acute pain. Uh, patients might also complain with bleeding tendencies. Other than that, gout, visual disturbances, neurological manifestations and periapism apism can be seen. Patients might also be associated with other microbiological infections and clinically patients might manifest with facial rash and uh, it is most commonly seen uh, in juvenile uh, conditions so it is known as juvenile uh, chronic myeloblastic leukemia. Coming to the laboratory investigations usually uh, on blood examination anemia is normocytic normochromic anemia and uh, leukocytosis can be seen increased in the leukocyte count and the patient will give a history of natural history of uh, uh, chronic myeloblastic leukemia showing the chronic phase that is a uh, gradual onset then comes the accelerated phase uh, which we see uh, that the cells uh, completely replace uh, those of the normal cells then comes the blastic phase or blastic crisis that is uh, completely myeloid cells being replaced completely by the blastic uh, cells other than that the platelet count is usually normal or otherwise raised 
Then comes the bone marrow examination, which shows a hypercellularity, and uh, the presence of total or partial replacement of the myeloid cells can also be seen. Other than that, there is increased myeloid erythroid ratio, and presence of normal uh, normoblastic erythropoiesis can be seen. That uh, or otherwise there will be re reduced erythropoietic cells. The megakaryocytes uh, can be seen, uh, which are smaller in size, but they are conspicuous. Then this uh, cytogenetic uh, uh, examination shows presence of Philadelphia chromosome and the cytochemistry on cytochemical staining, there is a presence of reduced scores of the neutrophils when stained with alkaline phosphatase. The other investigations, we see that there is presence of elevated serum B12 levels and vitamin B12 binding capacities. So this is a chronic myeloid leukemia. Then the pictures showing the peripheral uh, blood showing with uh, May Grunwald Gimsa stain showing the increased neutrophil count uh, showing leukocytosis can also be seen. Um, next coming is a marked leukocytosis that is increased in the leukocyte count and uh, there is also megakaryocyte uh, which can be seen that is a hyperlobulated megakaryocyte which is abnormally increased in size. Coming to the treatment, a patient has usually suggested for uh, imatinib uh, or oral therapy and in case of uh, severe bone marrow involvement, uh, they are transplanted with allogenic bone marrow and uh, interferon alpha is being suggested or chemotherapy can be given. Others such as splenic radiation, splenectomy and leukopheresis can be given. Usually uh, complications, it is... Uh, we see that 80% uh, cases uh, they show um, end up in death uh, when, the, uh, when there is disease, disease acceleration and blastic transformation. Coming to chronic lymphocytic leukemia, usually it is a B cell chronic lympho also known as B cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic leukemia because of the presence of small lymphocytes. It is present in 9% of all the lymphoid neoplasms. Uh, and you most commonly seen in the age group of uh, elderly patients that is up, up to uh, uh, up to an age group of 50 years and uh, males are more commonly infected when females with a ratio of 2 is to 1 and uh, the symptoms it is usually does not produce any signs and symptoms initially it is asymptomatic and insidious onset and patients usually uh, uh, appear to be anemic that is presence of paleness can be seen other than that weakness uh, lethargy can also be seen in this patient's so easy fatigability other than that, lymphogenopathy, splenomegaly, that is enlargement of the lymph nodes, enlargement of the spleen, enlargement of the liver can also be seen in these patients. Hemorrhagic manifestations such as easy bleeding or bruising can be seen from certain areas such as oral cavity, nose can be seen. Coming to since uh, the leukocytes are reduced in number in lymphocytic leukemia, the patients are more susceptible to infections, particularly the respiratory tract infections. And other than that, the other findings could be there is a presence of mediastinal pressure in this patient's disturbed vision and bone, point, uh, bone pains as well as joint pains can be seen. And so, uh, how, when does a chronic, uh, so the chronic lymphocytic leukemia usually occurs uh, during the stage where stem cells uh, differentiate, uh, usually uh, the stem cells differentiate into lymphoid stem cell and then this lymphoid stem cell is being converted gradually into a lymphoid blast cell. This lymphoid blast cell results in a B lymphocyte or a T lymphocyte. So this B lymphocyte which has been resulted or formed from the stem cell results in the formation of a chronic lymphocytic leukemia which affects the B cells. Coming to the laboratory findings in these patients, we see that there is normocytic or uh, normochromic anemia which might be mild to, mild to moderate in range and there is increased in the leukocyte count, the leukocyte uh, so which is known as leukocytosis can be seen. Other than that, a specific cells which appear in the form of smudge or basket cells can be seen in these patients which are the degenerating leukocytes and uh, the platelet count is usually normal or moderately reduced in these patients. Coming to the bone marrow examination, we find there's increased in the leukocyte count. It could be 25 to 95 percent increased, uh, which could be a total of all the cells. Whereas the myeloid and the erythroid precursor cells are normally reduced. The uh, cytogenetic uh, investigations have uh, proved the presence of trisomy 12 chromosome. Next coming is on lymph node biopsy. Uh, we see that the lymph, lymph node architecture has been entirely, entirely being replaced by diffuse proliferation of well differentiated and mature small uniform lymphocytes can be seen which is a characteristic feature of a biopsy of a lymph node in case of uh, leukemias.
The other investigations include the presence of erythroid rosette test uh, which shows a positivity and positive for also with B cell markers and Coombs test also shows a positivity. These are the other additional investigations which have been carried to diagnose. This is a picture showing a picture uh, blood smear being stained with right stain uh, showing the peripheral blood smear showing the presence of basket cells at the corner in the first picture then coming as a BSL uh, chronic lymphoblastic leukemia small lymphocyte leukemia showing uniform uh, small leukocytes which are being re replacing completely the lymph node biopsy which has been stained with hematoxylin and eosin stain. Next coming is a smear cells showing the presence of smudge cells which is present in the center which showing numerous cytoplasmic extensions. Coming to the treatment and prognosis of chronic lymphoblastic leukemia, patients are being uh, suggested for taking uh, alkylating drugs, uh, corticosteroids and even radiotherapy in severe cases and when there is completely spleen involvement then splenectomy is done. Prognosis is usually better than the chronic myeloid leukemia and usually relates, correlates with that of the stages and these stages are classified into three stages. Stage A which shows lymphocytosis alone and with limited lymphadenopathy. Stage uh, 2 or stage B which shows lymphocytosis, lymphadenopathy as well as hepatic splenomegaly. Stage 3 which shows lymphocytosis, anemia and thrombocytomia. So these are the three stages of chronic lymphocytic leukemia and which based on these stages the prognosis correlates. Thank you.